Hello and welcome to my review of the Age of Sigmar Dark Oath War Queen Marakar Blood Sky for your Slaves to Darkness army. She will set you back £20, which is interestingly £2.50 more than the Dark Oath Chieftain, which I have right here. I don't know quite how she costs more. Maybe it's to do with the box that she's in. Maybe because it, she's newer, maybe because people will buy less of her than the Dark Oath. I, don't, I don't, really don't know. But either way, she is £20, which is quite a lot for a single miniature that's about this size. Yes, she's got a load of detail, but uh, in my opinion, she should be £17.50. There's no way I can justify her being this uh, £20. I mean, she does have a little bit of a scenic base, so maybe you could factor that in. She is an awesome looking model, though. Let's let's just put that on the table right now. Uh, I much prefer her to the Dark Oath Chieftain. So again, with a lot of Games Workshop products and models, the value you put on these models can well be very personal. So she comes in this awesome box, which I much prefer, especially if there aren't any plastic inserts. I think there was a plastic insert with this one, which kind of defeats the point of putting it in a cardboard box. Uh, recently, uh, the Valerian and Alea models, um, that was on one sprue and there wasn't a uh, plastic insert, which was great. Uh, it, they just came in that um, cardboard box. And I think that's a goal that we're, we're all trying to achieve. Um, the back of the box is beautiful too. That's where you find the paint guide for her. You don't get another slip. It's not in the instruction guide. Uh, uh, what you do get in the instruction guide is of course, the instructions of how to build her. Just on one page, very straightforward and simple. I had no issues whatsoever. You might get a little bit of line on the hack, on the ax uh, grip, but other than that, it's fine. And also guess what? You get the rules in here too. See, is it that difficult to put them in other Age of Sigmar uh, boxes. I don't think it is, let's face it. Um, but you get them in a number of languages too, which is cool. The rules are outdated though. Her current rules on the Age of Sigmar app and in the Slaves of Darkness Battle Tome are different. The wording is different and also the Warlord Axe uh, operates differently in that uh, she has six attacks now instead of uh, four. But the same to hit wound, rend and damage. Anyway, that's a little preview of, of some of the rules. Of course, the rules will have changed because the Slaves Darkness Battle Tome came out very late last year in 2019 and this has actually been dated 2018. So, of course, uh, you know, a year and a half or almost two years later, you're gonna have a change and an update in the rules for her, as with a lot of, a lot of uh, other models. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll take a closer look at her. We'll zoom in and uh, explore her features. And then we'll go through some size comparisons because there are no spare parts for her. What you see is what you get, uh, WYSIWYG, if you've ever heard that before. Um, this is the model herself. She is beautiful. She really is. She's swinging this Warlord axe. Uh, you know, the attention to detail there with a little um, hoop on the hilt. Uh, you, the boots with this swaying hair, uh, this dagger, ceremonial dagger probably, her chest plate, uh, the horns um, protruding out either side or off of her helmet, um, the ram's horns, the horn on her armour there, this uh, rune shield, which is fantastic and it's resplendent in uh, chaos uh, shrine, in chaos symbols. Uh, she's got a lovely cloak with some tags and um, uh, some fur. The Warlord Axe itself is lovely. Uh, it looks quite light as well. Um, not a lot, of, a lot of metal on there. And she's got this brilliant scenic base with, uh, I think a skull and, well, a couple of skulls actually, and uh, a centipede. I don't know if you can see that there. Let's just enhance. Oh. Sorry. There you go. Look at that awesome looking uh, centipede. It's incredible. So yeah, loads of detail on this model. It's gonna be a joy to paint uh, in your chosen colors. And uh, I think it will really go well with Godsworn Hunt or uh, with uh, the Untamed Beasts models, but mainly the Godsworn Hunt. Um, she goes well with the Dark Oath Chieftain too. There's lots of uh, shared aesthetics between all of these Slaves to Darkness uh, models. Okay, that's a little close up of her. Let's have a look at her compared to other models. So straight away, let's just compare her to the Dark Oath Chieftain. Um, 
they're on the same size base these they're two mil bases he is they're pretty much the same height really and he stood up fully and she's on a bit of a scenic base she might she's, she's got the overall height with swinging that axe as well but uh, you know if he had his uh, sword swinging then um, he would probably uh, be a bit taller but uh, yeah she's definitely has more presence I think you know because she's in that action pose compared to a a little little gladiator ping 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 uh, she you know sort of is a fair bit bigger but that's just the pose and that scenic uh, base compared to a sorcerer lord it's it's you know she's she's taller than him because she's on that rock uh, but even they those models go well together but the the sorcerer lord has definitely shown its age with hardly any detail uh, compared to marikar uh, next to a chaos knight yeah look at that huge compared to her now and maybe even just a normal chaos um warrior she's she's taller than a normal chaos warrior nice little challenges there and yeah we've got from from roid crusher there as well fantastic she goes up to his belly i want to say i think i should just do an ogroid myrmidon as well because he's got the shield so that's her next to him they could have a little jewel couldn't they probably a nice little face off yeah so that just gives you a, a little idea a taste of um, other models in the uh, slave darkness range and how they measure up to her 40k wise then so i've got a standard space marine on the left and a primaris on the right i always like to do this comparison because most people know how big space marines are so she's taller than a normal space marine so she's quite a large lady and uh, then a primaris Primus is just a little bit taller, but her head, her helmet uh, horns do uh, are taller than than him completely in total. So yeah, she's similar sort of height as a Primaris if you want to look at it that way. And there are all the size comparisons. I hope they've helped. What we'll do now is go through all of her rules, which can be found on the Free Age of Sigma app or in your brand new Slaves of Darkness battle tome. She's just after a demon prince uh, above the Dark Oath Chieftain. As you'd expect, she is a leader. Uh, unit size minimum is one, maximum one. She's the same points cost as the Chieftain. They're both 90 points. Her stat line reads, movement of six inches, save of five plus, bravery eight and six wounds. Exactly the same as the Chieftain. Weapons though, she's got the rune etched axe which is a range one inch, six attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, rend minus one and damage one. That's fantastic that she's got so many attacks that are easy to hit and easy to wound and do a bit of rend damage as well. A Dark Oath War Queen is a single model. She is armed with a rune etched axe and carries an infernal rune shield. We'll talk about the rules in a moment. And speaking of which, the infernal rune shield, you roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this model. Brilliant. On a six, that wound or mortal wound is negated and the attacking unit suffers one mortal wound. What? That's insane. So any normal wound that she gets, so she fails that five plus save, you on a six, you then don't get that wound, but the attacking unit suffers a mortal wound. Amazing. Savage Duelist, this model fights at the start of the combat phase. This model cannot fight again in that phase unless an ability or spell allows it to fight more than once. In addition, add one to the damage characteristic of this model's rune etched axe if the target is a hero or monster. Brilliant. So she's now got damage two. Command abilities, the will of the gods. You can use this command ability at the start of your charge phase. If you do so until the end of that phase, add three to charge rolls for friendly chaos marauders and cultist units wholly within 12 inches of this model when they charge, when the charge roll is made. A unit cannot benefit from this command ability more than once per phase. But that's pretty good. You know, you're adding three to your charge rolls for marauders and cultists that if they're within 12 inches of her. Keywords, chaos, mortal, slaves to darkness, eye of the gods, hero, and dark oath queen. How does she compare to her doppelganger, the, the, other, the other guy, the other Dark Oath person, the, the Dark Oath chieftain? Well, as I said before, same stat line, but he's got this Warlord Axe and a Cursed Broadsword. 
he doesn't have a shield. And that Chaos Rune Shield does have a neat little trick up its sleeve. In theory, he's got four attacks, so he's got less attacks than her, and it is harder for him to hit with his broadsword, but it does do a nice uh, two damage for those three attacks. He has single ability, he, his different ability is a Berserk Charge, where you add three to the attack's characteristic if he charged, so that's decent. Uh, so now he's got six attacks, so overall he is getting more attacks if he did charge. Uh, at the end of, and he's also got Death Blow, which means at the end of the combat phase, any enemy models slain by the unit in, the, in that phase, each enemy unit within one inch of this model suffers one mortal wound. So that's quite a nice stacking ability. Um, and also his command ability, Last Gasp of Glory, uh, Chaos Mortars and Cultists within 12 inches that are slain. If they've not yet fought in that phase, they can fight before being removed from play. So they both add something to your Slayers of Darkness army. It's nice to have both of them, really. Both their command abilities are very useful. It depends, really, whether you want to help with the charging or you want, to, you want them to be able to lash out at the end. And I do like that Infernal Rune Shield. I'd love to see that happen on, on the gaming table. Uh, that'd be a really fun little ability to use. So there you go, that's my uh, review of the Dark Oath War Queen Marakar Blood Sky. I think she's a fantastic model, uh, good set of rules, uh, nice as a leader if you wanted like a, a little Marauder, Cultist, Untamed Beast, Spy Tyrants even, Warband. If you didn't want any Chaos Warriors at all, you just wanted uh, some kind of more human uh, type models. Um, you, could, you know, you could even put uh, Ogroid Myrmidon in there or a Fomoride Crusher just um, uh, wandering with them as well. That would be quite cool. Maybe uh, they could attempt to uh, take down a Fomoride Crusher. You, you can build your own little um, scenario in there uh, for using them all. What do you guys think of the model and the rules? Do you always take her or is there another HQ choice or leader unit that you uh, prefer to take instead? Please do put your comments and thoughts down below as always. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching Death to the False Emperor.